Good evening and welcome to My Future. I'm Ravenna Kaur. And as you can see, we are in an extraordinary setting this evening. We are in one of the most quaint restaurants in Harare, Antique Rose. They've given us the opportunity to have this stage tonight and uh, speak on what I'm proud to be a part of, is the media industry in Zimbabwe. We have a full table of uh, former and current broadcasters, each of them having extensive experience in media in Zimbabwe. And they're here to contribute and bring to the table the aspects that they understand of our Zimbabwean media landscape, where we've come from, where we are today, and where we're going. So, let me introduce who we have tonight. We have uh, Mr. Tari Ntetwa. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And we also have a Mrs. Wusi Chindore. Welcome. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Good to be here. Good to have you. And then we also have... Uh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Mr. Gary Kai. No, sorry. Gary Thompson. Tell me to yeah. <laughs> and then we have uh, Ms. Anna Miti. Welcome. Good to have you. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have Mr. Titch Mataz. Welcome. How are you doing? Very colonial setting, though. Yeah. Why so? It, it is. It looks different. Well, if it was colonial, we wouldn't be at the table, Titch. Would yeah. we? <laughs> so, as you can see, I'm going to struggle controlling the show today because everybody here has controlled the show before, but that's the fun of it. And ultimately, we're going to have a discussion about our uh, industry and hopefully educate you on where we stand and what we understand and what we're trying to do as practitioners doing our job and bring the best of media to all of you. I want to start with you, um, Mrs. Chindoy, if you could tell us, I mean, you've been, you've walked the road, started at ZBC, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I believe you stumbled also into your, your time yes. as, a, as a journalist. You yeah, were really yeah. looking for it. No, I was. Um, so maybe you can tell us, I mean, you were one of the first black uh, presenters on the radio station, which was Radio Jacaranda at the time yeah, that you that's worked right. for. Yeah, that's um, right. Let's talk race and media in Zimbabwe. For me, you know, uh, being able to look at the media today and where we came from, it's such a breath of fresh air, mm -hmm. you know, because it was very difficult at that time um, just being part of that transformation, you know. I mean, I always tell my kids that one of the things that happened to me, which was very emotional, I even remember it today, was going with this hairstyle, you know, there was this fancy hairstyle where we had little beads in our hair and so on. And I walked into the studio feeling all proud, you know, and there were all these people looking at me and they just wanted to burst out laughing. And I wanted to weep. I couldn't That's even do my program properly because I thought I was looking quite cool, you know, <laughs> but they actually thought I was a big joke. And mm -hmm. afterwards, you know, I was told that they were laughing because they said I looked like a doily. I think you know, <laughs> believe you've grown from that. Yeah, know? so that's yeah. why we're laughing. <laughs> so now, um, I mean, and on the other hand, I was speaking with Gary just before the program, and we were talking about the advertising landscape, which is really where you've been dominant in Zimbabwe, part of media as well. Um, what did have you felt has happened now, um, given where advertising has gone in, in Zimbabwe? Well, I think it's, yeah, things. I mean, things are moving at a great pace. So, you know, I don't want to be one of these old when I, when I, but, you know, I see some of the young guys that are upstarts now. Some of them came from even our firm, and they're doing great things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think I'm an import to a native lang language. You know, they're into technology, and I still, you know, use a pen. But it's great to see ideas moving. So if I can't run with that, I've got to find and transition where I'm going to work in. But I think it's healthy. You know, there's going to be change, and, uh, you know, some guys are running at a better pace than I can, and I just, like, take my head off to them. Right. And now I believe uh, also back going forward in the past, you know, when uh, look at the radio stations, for example, um, when we talk of the music library, um, you know, storing vinyl records, for example, mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. now having mm -hmm. music libraries on the mm -hmm. computer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Zimbabwe is not as far advanced as we'd like to be with our technologies. Um, what would you say are the benefits of having a little bit of an archaic way of operating? Now, maybe such if you could come in there. Um, just in terms of documenting our stuff and you know how the, the, the contrast has been from back then to now. First and foremost, uh, I want to salute my uncle. Mm. I mean, we all dwarfed right mm. here because I mean, she's been at it for mm. you know, 10 minutes. Yeah. My pain comes in that uh, she's, not, she's no longer an active broadcaster. Why is that? Now, I think maybe perhaps the reason in this country is, is that at certain points within the history of broadcasting, uh, it stopped taking care of its talent. 
And so there was a hemorrhage and, and we lost a lot of good people and good talent. Mm -hmm. uh, they're no longer participants in the industry. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to try and fix that. Secondly, you were talking about um, the ability to create value uh, from an element of an archaic way of doing mm -hmm. things and digitalization. I think it is <coughs> what it does in Zimbabwe particularly is those who perhaps came from an old school have a lot to offer to the youngsters. And I think that uh, some of the young broadcasters should, should start to embrace uh, the older fellows. So I'll, I'll come to you now here, um, you know, and, 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 and I think we are the same generation here. Mm -hmm. And what is your, your call to be working in this environment right now? It's a little bit of both. Um, for me, where I come from, I, um, I love radio and uh, I, I, radio is my thing. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like radio has such a huge place and a, a huge role to play in everything. I mean, I do understand TV and it's beautiful, but with radio. So you can use radio for advocacy, you can use radio to, to even, you know, for personal growth. Mm -hmm. So for me, that has been the core. Uh, and, and mainly, um, that's why I stay there. When others are leaving or when others are doing other things, I think radio really uh, yeah, does things. So for, you're for, for the love of Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting from, from that. From it's that. for the love of radio. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, Tari. You are a producer, right? You give us content. What are you finding are the challenges for people like yourself who are creating content and not having the mediums to show it off or having the technology to make it best? What are your challenges? Well, there are, there are plenty. Mm. But maybe I could also start with a bit of history. Sure. Film studies in Zimbabwe, mostly us, the blacks here in Zimbabwe, were consumers of film but not participating in the production of the, of the films that were being made. That's how it started. That's how we had contact with film. Into the 80s, when we got our independence, um, new government then tried to support film production. They brought um, some Hollywood producers into Zimbabwe, and um, there were quite a number of um, films that were being made. At that particular time, we um, were used mostly as a location, but the advantage of it, of course, was that one or two uh, of our um, people would work as uh, backroom staff or as assistants of assistants. There were skills that were being living, developed. Yes, it's being developed sure. somewhat. Sure. Yeah. And then into the 90s, I think the outbreak in the 90s were films about some problems that we're having here, mm -hmm. the films which were, in most cases, donor funded. We had films where we were victims, victims of AIDS. Victims of uh, teenage pregnancy. But you say victims like it was white people producing the, the, the movies at that time, which is not entirely true. Maybe they're no, not. It's, it's not. They, they, they're funding. Mm. So whoever is funding the film, mm. I'm sure... Gives can the always, agenda. Yes, Correct. gives the agenda. Okay. So there wasn't an agenda to tell our own story, whatever our own story really means. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's for... That's, that's for another day. <laughs> 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 yes. And then I think around 2000 our romance with the donors seemed to uh, go down and because i think the industry was so much over relying on them mm -hmm. it was left open Branded. stranded mm -hmm. yes right. people didn't know where to where to go so the way we are right now are people now trying to uh, independent producers trying possibly from their pockets and trying to run around to try and bring out something and this is the background of it so right. this is where we are so the challenges are at this moment now there obviously um isn't a lot of government involvement there isn't a lot of um there isn't much do we, funding do we have a, a film industry as well? we, we do not have a film industry at all mm -hmm. we have we have some individuals who um yeah who have cameras um, <laughs> and talent and passion yes well i think uh, that is the the growth and the death of the film industry in zimbabwe i think from what you're saying right now you're speaking as though it is non-existent and i think your question was quite pertinent there um but now that's one aspect of media and tonight of course we're trying to touch on every aspect as best we can we're going to take a quick break and come back into uh finding out more about our media industry in zimbabwe with our panelists tonight so stay tuned don't go anywhere
Welcome back to my future. We are at Antique Rose this evening, which is our studio setting for tonight's episode. And we are here with uh, Mr. Tavim Tetwa, Mrs. Musi Chinomi, Mr. Gary Thompson, Ms. Anna Miti, and Mr. Titch Mataz. And we just, uh, before the break, we're hearing about the film industry. Uh, not a very motivational story, to be honest, um, but it is honest. And uh, one question I have for our panel at large in our different spheres of media is, is is there potential for Zimbabwe to make its media industry a multi-million or billion dollar industry? Is there money here? And what can we do to tap that potential? I definitely think there's money and um, lots of it, but it takes, um, for example, we know that we have digital platforms, we know that we have traditional media that is the way that it has always been operating, but it's a time where if the media opens up its eyes and looks at other ventures, looks at, looks at other things and other ways of doing business, Yes, then definitely there is money. Uh, like, like for example, you, you find in South Africa, uh, even the SADC and, and, and other broadcasters can actually uh, sponsor awards, uh, they can have concerts, they can have all these things happening. It's just one aspect of it, it's just entertainment. But then you can look at it in the sense of getting documentaries or getting, um, you know, advertising through blogs, through digital, digital platforms and other things. There is very much uh, potential, but it's all about harnessing what we have and not doing businesses it has to be different. I don't know if I can just also add to that. I think it's also an issue of who are the investors, who are the potential investors in media. And perhaps issues of education, awareness, that media is a potential source of income. Because all these people who are investing are choosing other things that are not media. Mm -hmm. And we have to maybe look at that and say, how do we get them mm -hmm. to be attracted yeah. to invest in media as, as, as a possibility? When we look at entertainment, we need to look at the products of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Those are the said celebrities. Mm -hmm. In Zimbabwe, do we have that? Do we have a culture of an appreciation of these so said celebrities? Do they have the lifestyle of a celebrity? Are they paid enough? Are endorsements giving them enough to give them that status to make them attractive and appealing to the foreign market or the investors? You need to create uh, an understanding of what it is you're trying to invest in. Mm -hmm. What is the product? Mm -hmm. And uh, who are the stakeholders? Who are the consumers yeah? and what value do you give that product? If you look at the American system where Hollywood has become a great income uh, for the American films, yes. yeah? if you look at Nigeria, I'm saying you're going to far, let's talk of Nigeria. Mm, Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. Even South Africa, Hollywood, as you mm. say, mm. yeah? it's, it's, it's a policy makers who recognize that we can turn this into value. Right. Mm. And, and the thing about the media is it, go, it transcends borders. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And only them to go is a great tool to uh, showcase who we are, right. our tradition, right. uh, and even bring money into our, into our economy when it goes mm -hmm. out to mm -hmm. these live gigs. Mm -hmm. And similarly, we need to now begin to recognize that if we as Zimbabweans don't embrace our talent, package it, and then release it into the world, no one will do that. Right. I think I want to ask you to personalize this for just a second. You are Tich Mataz, right? Ticha, Matambanazo, Jajiri. You know, you are a brand that many people, right? Who say first? Jajiri. <laughs> so you're a brand that many people recognize, you know, and uh, you have had a very uh, up and down journey as a media practitioner. How have you managed to bounce back? I thank those who continue to support my brand. And I think what, what has happened with me is <clears throat> I've had the courage to get up, stand up, and keep moving. And some people don't have that courage. Do you know what I mean? But what it therefore means is if one of us falls, let's pick them up, mm -hmm. let's dust them off, right. and let's get, get them back into the race. So we don't have enough of that in this country. I've got to say this, and it's very important that Zimbabweans know and recognize that some of the problems we face in this country, it's not external problems. It's us not being able to support one another. For the first time, Zimbabweans have really got to work together and decide what direction we're going to take this industry, mm. and let's all fold our sleeves and get busy. Right. Mm. I like that, and I'm going to put you on the spot for a second, Gary. So you are an advertising, right? That's the brand we identify you with, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that's your specialty. And we're talking right now about selling a product. Right. If Zimbabwe sharpened its tools, as uh, Mr. Mataz said, we pick each other up, and we begin to create through our producers yeah. and support from our gurus, right? Mm -hmm. And we begin to create good products, right? Let's mm -hmm. use the word good, yeah. just to yes. be safe. Mm -hmm. 
Great's yeah, coming, but we're good. Yes, yeah, we're okay. good. <laughs> and you, uh, in, in advertising, have to now sell the Zimbabwean product. Jim Stengel said something that really affected my life, you know, Ruby. It's, it's about the authentic center. And I think it talks about the authentic center of brands. Mm -hmm. And from that, everything comes. You know, And we can do a lot of whitewashing. But I think the truth is we've got a broken nation, a divided nation. I think Jesus said, a divided house falls. And Zimbabwe's fallen. It's fallen. Terry's beautiful recollection of the generations has many points of truth, but we've mm -hmm. forgotten that we've thrown away the foundations. Right. You know, ZBC never created itself. We've got a, a government broadcaster that by nature cannot be creative. It cannot create enterprise. We can. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get to the point, in my opinion, like a British Airways, privatize. Not with the mindset of shouting at our government. We've got to stop this divide. And so I would say that, you know, the whole system is broken. A producer cannot produce in this nation, not necessarily because of politics anymore, but because of economics. Mm -hmm. How can the broadcaster pay you for a show that in itself cannot sell yeah. and it's bankrupt? Mm -hmm. So you don't go and produce the show. So you go to the sponsor to get the show. The sponsor says, here's my brand. I want to see my brand all over the show. And suddenly you compromise the creativity. The mm -hmm. Right. Whereas a great mind goes somewhere else. But when we get that creative expression back, we don't try and bottle it and control it. Say, hey, just run. Mm -hmm. I think we'll fly. But right now we've got our fists at government, we've got our fists at the people, and it's you just got to divide the people. So it's not going to work right now. That's my opinion. This is dangerous. I mean, very, actually quite scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I like what you referenced saying, you know, when you create the product, what do you do with it? How does a film producer make money? How do you even appeal to the actors and actresses to come out of wherever they are and say, here's a stage, shine and you can make a life from this you know mm -hmm. the problem i think or the challenge has been with with traditional media even the ones that you were mentioning is that we have things that we think people should know or things that we think should be out there but then these young people have their own different minds right. and this is where some of them have flourished even you've got your your online televisions yeah. you know those yeah. ones that, mm. that have come in mm -hmm. and they've created and they're, 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 they're running they're going because yeah. they rather choose other, yeah. other mediums they so brand can, themselves differently mm -hmm. where does the buck stop them who who should come up with a solution to turn these things around. Is it not the legislator? Yes and no. It's dual. <laughs> yeah, it's dual. I think, yes, it's the legislator. But you said, and I agree with you, that sometimes we're our own worst enemies, that we don't grab yes. the potential that's there. Mm -hmm. Especially now, you know, broadcasting and media is not just about radio. It's not just about television, you know. There's so much we can do out there. And perhaps we're limiting our own selves because of not thinking outside the box. Maybe the other thing is ourselves. How can we possibly make ourselves unignorable? Yeah. Is that a, it's a great word. A great word. <laughs> we like that. It wasn't a word, 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 word like it. Word today. I'm unignorable, I'm going to ignore you. Because it's horrible. <laughs> yes, it's horrible. No. Yes. How can we make ourselves uh, unignorable? Un yes. <laughs> That's um, whoever corporates, whoever they are, mm -hmm. they cannot afford uh, to do something without, yeah. without us yeah. at yeah. some yeah. point. Yeah. So I think it's also, it's also up to us to know what's my relevance to a restaurant like this place. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm a film producer. I come here, what can I do for this particular restaurant? What business can I create? I'm going up the road, there's an embassy, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a service station. So I'm going to the service station, what can I do? What can I do for a service station? Mm -hmm. And so that this the guy with, with the service station can actually see value in who I am in my in the job that I do. Yeah. No good. Okay, I like where this has gone because um, in as much as we're trying to cover all aspects, I know we never will manage in half an hour. But one thing I do want to say then, from what we've just said, what are we waiting for? The train has left the station. Mm -hmm. The people are not watching. They are out there on the internet. My kids have chosen internet over a satellite broadcaster or other because mm -hmm. they can get what they want. They're mm -hmm. all natives watching mm -hmm. what they want. to what they mm -hmm. want. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. So mm -hmm. if we want to, we've got to be creative and we can't overregulate. Yeah. It's and we've got to be quicker. We've got to be uh, and we've got to be nimble. Mm -hmm. And we and I love what you say. You've got to be unignorable, mm -hmm. which, <laughs> which means the creative, the story. I love the way your mind was going. Like embassy food. I mean, mm. that's what creative mm. people do. Yes. We try to box it. It's not going to work in a box. Mm. And we've got to find low level barriers, low cost for the guys to produce great shows. Get them up. The Mocha daughters. That, that that generation of yeah. humor. Yeah. You know, you talk about. Mm. You know, yeah. what's out there. Yeah, it's got. Yeah. I, I mean, so if, if there's too many barriers to them, they're going to go somewhere else. So yeah. as broadcasters, we better shift quickly because we're dinosaurs in an age of. Movement. I agree with you. you know. Unfortunately, sorry, we're just going to have to uh, wrap up now and come back to more mm. conclusions right after the break. You are watching My Future. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome 
Welcome back to my future as we wrap up our episode this evening on media in Zimbabwe. We're going to try and uh, come up with some solutions, a way forward um, from our mindsets and where we think Zimbabwe should go, what we need to do, the challenges we need to overcome. We've outlined a number of issues and that always is a starting point. My key question tonight is going to remain the same. How do we make the media industry a money-making industry? Embrace talent, right. but most importantly, create areas in which the talent can begin to perform. Yeah. Let's harness it, let's polish it up, let's create uh, systems in which we can now release it to consumers. My message is mostly to, to, um, to the young people out there and, and those who are trying to get into the broadcasting mm -hmm. industry, those who have the talent, those who have something to offer. There are other avenues. In as much as we want to advocate for uh, traditional media, uh, the mainstream media, to open up, you know, to those young people, give them an opportunity, give them uh, uh, somewhere where they can, you know, where can, they can shine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of such opportunities, because we know they are limited, they themselves have to take their own future into their own hands mm -hmm. and find those avenues. Sure. And definitely they are there. Maybe the aspirations of some young people who are trying to get into the industry today, they are possibly using a very an out of reach model of how to how to do things. Um, maybe because we are so much exposed to Hollywood, you think I can't make a film because I can't make it the way it's being made in, mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But we in Africa, there are other countries in Africa, West Africa, go to Burkina Faso, Mali, they are making films. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. No, but, yeah. 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 but what they happen? they yeah. understand their culture and they understand their people, they understand what their people need yeah. to consume. And okay. that's what they are yeah. that's what they are producing. And they also know the means of how the people can can consume those products. And, so, and give an example of dance or music, Zim dance or it's it's mm. a model oh, that no. shouldn't work, really. <laughs> because we don't you know I mean, so we're so like, so we're like, no. <laughs> but guess what? When one of those artists goes to Marinette Bo Complex, you can have five thousand Shut it down. people who are there. Mm. Shut down the whole thing. Mm. Yeah. So the bottom line is all people, CEOs, private companies, public companies, okay including myself. We're obsolete. We're dinosaurs. The world is moving. Too far. So we've got to get with this crowd and say, what can we do? No disrespect. They're getting news right now, whichever way they want. Yeah. And unless we open up for them, they're going to find another thing. I love what you're saying, Tariq. Go out there, shoot your idea, get it done, bring it in, and then start putting the pressure that way. And if they don't take it, take it somewhere else. And eventually you're going to create your world. Because if not, our world's changing and they're consuming elsewhere. If somebody breaks out, you're saying young people can go take that and go onto YouTube and have more viewers. How are they going to make money from that? Well, they don't. But this they, get, the they get to express. But, but you know that young people now are driven by that. Absolutely. Because of our situation as a country where young people, a lot of them are unemployed, yep. the first thing they're going to put their energy to has got to make their money. Right. So they're so not going to do something for a passion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Where's passion, the money? passion mm -hmm. plus money plus talent equals success. So mm -hmm. they might have two out of three. Right. Mm -hmm. Our corporates are dead. D-E-A-D. Mm -hmm. I've been with so many corporates, no disrespect, they can't make a decision. When they do make a decision, it's not trustworthy. And the young people are saying, I don't trust you corporates in Barbie, because mm. you don't play fair. Because the corporates are on the bones of their backside. They don't have the dollar. So we're in this broken place. So I think the only way to barrier that entry is take your creativity, take your passion. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make a lot of money, but you've got momentum. And then you take the next step and the next step. No, I totally agree that you can leverage what you put on YouTube and so on and then make Use money out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Are we expecting government to be the ones who change our situation yes in the media space what do we need yes. from them 70 percent yes right it involves legislation and things like mm -hmm. that but mm -hmm. they also have the the ability to to then perhaps um create something that allows for corporate zimbabwe to uh, gain mm -hmm. from supporting mm -hmm. talent. yeah i think also you know as i said when when back in our time a lot of our training happened on government to government understanding right you know right. so i think there's also space for that mm -hmm. that if we can encourage government as well to come up with government to government agreements that result in capacity development mm -hmm. for all this talent that we have mm -hmm. yeah okay for me it's, it's it's on the public media um obviously coming from a background where zbc is is, is the public media uh, the government uh, role there for me would be if there's funding uh, that allows opening up of that space for the young people to come in. Uh -huh. Because, of the, you know, the situation that is prevailing at the moment where you find that, you know, the ZBC has to find itself, it doesn't always work 
on a pu in a in a public um aspect, public broadcast aspect, because we find even the BBCs of this world, SABCs, are, are funded by the government mm -hmm. because they recognize that you need to create that opportunity, and that right. opportunity cannot be created in a private uh, setup sure. because these people are commercial and, and they have to make money. money. Mm -hmm. So if you are not saying if you, if they are not given that platform where people are making money, then you have to open it up for them and fund it. I'm, I'm always wanting to be results based and the way forward, um, especially at the end of any program. Um, so I think in conclusion, we had a suggestion from uh, Garika here during the break on uh, again. Right, mm -hmm. we're at the so now we're going to start with you, um, Tabby, because you are the producer here, so you're the creative uh, well, you too, but you know, you're the creative mind. You're going to start the story, and the story we are speaking in the first person as though we are media. Let's say media was a person, and we are talking about our feelings, right? So, in literally. 30 seconds. You start a line, a sentence, then um, Mrs. Chindoy, then myself, then I mean, Gary, I'm then sure Anna, then Tetra. me from him. I would have, I would have understood. Okay, you can start. You can consummate yes. this conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Creativity breaks boxes. Government can't control it all. And we shouldn't expect them to. We should be creating and they should let us. Media is a powerful tool. And that medium can actually uh, change people's lives. Once success is embraced in, in broadcasting, it's shared amongst all Zimbabweans. So we need to pull together as one people, one nation, and support that which is Zimbabwe. Let's recognize the knowledge, the skills, the experience that's there, and let's use it. There's a Zimbabwean story to be taught, and we must tell it. It is unignorable. <laughs> <laughs> and as a, Zimbabwean, as a Zimbabwean media practitioner, this conversation is about my future and it should be about yours because you consume everything that those of us here do and we want it to be the best for my future and for yours uh thank you very much to our panel for joining us tonight it's been a very engaging conversation and uh we'll be back with more of my future next week i'm Ravenico. that's it for me for tonight good night be good and if you can't be good be safe